Isaiah 25 and verse 8 is our verse of the day. Hey, uh, apologize for starting late again. Um, if you look at the verse of the day, it's Isaiah 25 and it is verse 8. And while we look at that, you're going to see that it's not just a slide that you go forth and look at and to the point of it's the easiest thing in the world to just uh, right away catch on what it's saying. And that's the thing about doing this every morning of uh, re reading the scriptures, reading the word of God as we have the opportunity to do so and just uh, off the hand, not having the verse the night before or the day before and being able to study it. It's just uh, how much time I have, uh, depending on when I wake up and get out of bed uh, till this time to uh, prepare for this. And sometimes uh, I wish I had a little more time to study um, to help prepare it. But I want to share my thoughts and what I have looked at this morning. And if you have any extra thoughts on this verse, on what you believe it is saying here, then I would appreciate you either throwing those in the comments or uh, shooting me a private message either way. Um, and uh, pray to God that we are uh, correctly dividing the Word of God as we look at this verse today and as we continue in our study. And so I got it up on the projector again, uh, up on the slides, my PowerPoint projector, uh, software, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can tell I'm very tech savvy with uh, my lingo, right? Um, but uh, as we continue on with our study, again, like it, share it, help others see this, and hopefully uh, we'll all grow as we study the Word of God. So start off with, let's look at that verse, Isaiah 25 and verse 8. Isaiah 25 and verse 8. It says, He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Now, if you have the time to read the remaining of this chapter of Isaiah 25, um, it is a lot of praise to our God. Um, it goes forth and just simply pointing out how great he is, the things he has done, how strong um, he is and, and the strength he gives, how he is the refuge. Um, and so it's just a, it's a praise to our Lord. And you get down here to verse 25, uh, verse eight, and it brings out the point of he swallowed up death forever. This is what I want to look at. And then I want to look at, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And then it goes forth and says, the rebuke of his people, he will take away from all the earth, where the Lord has spoken. Um, just right off the bat, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. And there may be more to this verse than what I'm just going to be bringing out. But it has a lot of thoughts into what will happen in the end of time. It really seems it speaks of um, prophecy to that point. It seems as we look at it and here's some extra verses that, that helped me to come to see that as I was looking into it this morning. And so we look at swallowed up death forever. And you look at first Corinthians 15 and verse 54, first Corinthians 15 and verse 54 I have the ESV is what I try. I've been trying to put up there for you guys to read along with me. I typically, if you hear me reading from my Bible, I usually uh, do my reading from uh, the New King James translation. Um, I, I like both of these translations. I use them uh, back and forth in my studies quite often. Um, but this verse here goes forth. It says, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And of course, you know, we, we can get in a big study and a big talk as we were to look at Christ. And of course, he had overcome death. He had conquered death and his resurrection. And um, there, that'd be a good study in explaining all, all that comes through that. But as we look here in 1 Corinthians 15, it kind of goes into that same point, but it speaks more to us. 
And the fact that when we put on imperishableness, when we mortals put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And, you know, once again, we're, we're looking at the end of time there then. Because right now we have a physical body. That's why so many people are worried right now. That's why we're shut in in our homes is the fact that we physically could see death. We physically could see the end of our life upon this earth. And that scares people. And yet, if we were to make sure our lives are right with God, with Christ, then we would be looking forward to that time of the immortality life that comes after it. Because as we look at the next part of that verse that we had read in Isaiah, it brings out, you know, that he will wipe away tears. And I think a lot of people's minds would go to this verse here in Revelation chapter 21, in Revelation 21 and verse 4, where he says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Now, so once again, uh, we're not sure how literal everything is in Revelation and what what exactly will be and what's kind of, you know, just to help give our minds that imagination of what it could be like. But it's a wonderful thought. It's a beautiful thought that we can have an eternal life without any more crying an eternal life without any more worries an eternal life without any more pain. And, and so it's a, a wonderful thought as we read this verse and as we look at uh, these other verses that kind of uh, say the same thing and go into the same direction here. And it's just, uh, you know, what heaven must be like. There's so much there in Revelation that uh, help us get a mindset of what it could be like. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful thought. If it's even just a, a, a you know, a pinch of what uh, we read there in It'll be beautiful, and especially here in chapter 21. I want to look at another verse here in 21 as we look at the next part where it says, rebuke his people in Isaiah. Um, one, before we get to Revelation 21, 27, is the point that we understand that, that God does rebuke us, that especially under the Old Testament, we saw his hand actually get into that, that, that he did punish them for things they had done. He allowed them to go into captivity um, we uh, can read even here in Revelation that uh, as many as he loves, he rebukes. That's uh, Revelation chapter 3. I'll look that up real quick. Revelation um, chapter 3. I'm pretty sure it's chapter 3. These, uh, yeah, 3 and verse 19. So Revelation 3 and verse 19, it says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. But here in Isaiah, if you were to go back to that verse, so we understand what exactly, it doesn't just say rebuke, it says something along with it. It says, he will take away, it says the rebuke of his people, he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And so, yes, one point would be that, you know, once again, you've made it to heaven, so therefore there, there shouldn't be any more uh, rebuking needed to be done because we are there, we, we've made it. And but another point to bring out is, you know, the, the persecution that we have upon this earth, the mocking that we go through for remaining faithful, the trials and tribulations that you have and that we've been warned that we will go through. That'll all come to an end because here in Revelation 21 and verse 27, in both cases, whether we're, we're looking at God's rebuke on us or the mocking that we have from other people it says but nothing unclean will ever enter in and this is speaking of heaven here it's speaking of the uh the new jerusalem and it says nor anyone who does what is detestable or false but only those who are written in the lamb's book of life and so in both cases if you're looking at them either way that that means there will be no temptation for us there there will be no more uh, people out there trying to make you fall and of course Satan will be thrown into hell also and he'll be in torment so he won't be able to uh, be testing us and tempting us in heaven and with that you know the temptations will come to an end and therefore we won't need to be rebuked by our Lord and Savior and it's just once again when we sit down and you take time to think about what heaven is going to be like because God created a beautiful world 
He created a beautiful universe. He's created a beautiful sun and moon and stars. And, you know, um, you know, I've flown a couple times and I love flying because you're, you're, you know, you're above the world and you're looking down. I can't imagine what it looks like from outer space. That it's just, it's so beautiful. God's created a beautiful place and heaven's going to be greater. Heaven's going to be just so much better. And it's just a wonderful, beautiful thought. So I hope that I've helped encourage you this morning as we look to the verse of the day. I hope that, again, you'll join me tomorrow. I hope that you'll share this so that others can watch it later on in the day also or a different day even then. So once again, thanks for joining me. I hope to talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day.